speech number three from the uh, Advanced Communication Manual Special Occasions. And the length of his speech is three to five minutes. The title of Greg's speech is White, I'm sorry, Not 21 Anymore. Let us welcome Greg Volk, Not 21 Anymore. Greg Volk. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, guests, I'm so honored to be the Roastmaster who can speak about the Toastmaster, Jerry Evans, this evening. As many of you already know, Jerry Evans is a great person, he'll do anything for anybody, and he devotes many hours to Toastmasters as well as probably his career. In fact, Jerry, you devote so many hours to Toastmasters that I don't know if you really work during a day because you can call you at any time at night and you're available, whether it's 1 in the morning, 2 in the morning, whatever time, it doesn't matter. And the reason why I say I don't know, think that you work during a day is because you probably at home have your whole office or rooms all decorated in black so you can hang from the rafters so you can be the bat and go out at night. And that's probably how you sleep. The other thing is, now that that secret's out, you need to know some more things about Jerry. If you don't know this already, Jerry is going through a midlife crisis. <laughs> how do I know this? It just dawned on me last week when I went to the Harper College Toastmasters meeting with Jerry. And Jerry was all excited. He comes in, sits down next to me, and says, you're never going to believe where I just came from. I'm like, where did you come from? I just jumped out of an airplane from 14,000 feet up in the air. It was wonderful. <laughs> I said, wow, that's great, Jerry. I looked at Jerry, and I was thinking in my head, although I didn't say it to him, like, what man at Jerry's age goes skydiving out of an airplane? There's only a couple reasons why you would do that. One is you want to impress a lady. Well, I know you didn't go skydiving with a lady, so that wasn't it. You went with your son. The second one would be that you need to fulfill your bucket list. That is probably getting fuller by the minute, so you better keep going with that because you don't have much time left to fulfill it. <laughs> the other thing, now that you know that he's going through this midlife crisis, is the fact that Jerry likes to dress for success. He likes to dress as if sometimes he's 21 as well, going out to the bars to pick up some ladies. Jerry, why don't you stand up? Let me show you. <laughs> Do a quick little turn around. See, he's dressed for success. I can still face him. I can still face him. I can still face him. Okay. <laughs> and there's one thing about Jerry's wardrobe, and that's the fact that he should be getting many dates because of the way he's dressed. Why, you ask? Why wouldn't he? And also on his date, for all the ladies, this is great. When you're there, I know that women like to go to the bathroom. And when they go to the bathroom, they like to adjust their hair, look at their face, make sure the lipstick's all good. However, if you date Jerry, you're not going to have to do this. And why is this? Look at Jerry's belt buckle. <laughs> if he stands up, that could be a mirror for every woman in the crowd. All they have to do is say, Jerry, stand up, and they can put on their lipstick, adjust their hair. You don't even have to leave the dinner table. It'd be wonderful. We'll love you for it, Jerry. You can take a seat now. The final reason why I think Jerry's going through a midlife crisis is Jerry is a wonderful dancer. If you've never seen him dance, this guy has some moves. <laughs> I think, I saw Jerry, I used to watch his show every weekend with my grandmother. And looking back at it, thinking about this, I think I saw Jerry next to Dick Clark in American Bandstand with the roller skates and the high socks on, chilling out with Dick Clark on American Bandstand. Although that show has ended, I thought about this and, hmm, what can I do for Jerry, my friend? And so I was thinking about it, and Jerry, Try to get a hold of Dancing with the Stars. They needed new people to get on the show. Well, I wasn't very successful. And they also told me that they tried Florence Leachman, who is an older person, and that didn't work out so well. 
So they didn't want another older fellow on the show. So their whole, the only show that I was able to get you booked on was a new commercial that's coming out for Metal Musical. So you're going to be dancing for that commercial. I hope you enjoy it and we can all watch it when it comes on up. But with all sincerity and all jokes aside, Jerry, you're a good guy. I've known you for a couple of years now. You'll do anything for anybody. Very thankful to know you, and I hope we get to be friends for longer in life and enjoy each other's company. Mr. Toastmaster. Evaluate Greg speech on roasting Jerry. I love roast, by the way. To evaluate the visual is three minutes. Thank you, Mr. General Manager, fellow Toastmasters, especially Greg. With Greg, I can cut right to the chase. Yes. <laughs> Greg, your roast got some laughs. That, that was the best part of your roast. The first thing to consider when you're roasting somebody is you're making the person who you're roasting the center of people's attraction. So if you move around and use big gestures, then you're not really helping your roles. If, if you look at all the roles uh, on uh, YouTube or TV, when Dean Martin roles, they're all good actors. They can do big gestures, but they don't walk around and uh, talk about, make it a speech. A roast is making the person you're roasting the center of attraction and getting black out. The second point we need to work on when you're roasting people is you do make the person the center of attraction but the person who you're roasting is not going to maybe want to stand up and face the crowd the one thing you could have done is hey look at that buckle I can see my face on the buckle of his belt could have been a better way of uh, telling people about his buckle as opposed to making him turn around because if you if you see the people on TV who are being roasted, they're embarrassed enough that chances are they might not listen to what you want them to do, right? Uh, the <coughs> third thing that you can uh, improve on in uh, improving the roast of your favorites. Is uh, <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? It's okay. use, use, use pauses and uh, that that will intrigue people. <laughs> as opposed to <laughs> as opposed to using a monotone voice and making a speech, use some dramatic pauses and structure the speech based on his traits, main traits what you want to go find out. And in the end, again, you know, everybody knows here that you love Jerry. You don't have to tell that in a roast. When you end the roast, the roast, it still has to be a roast. It can't be a toast. Right? Thank you. <laughs> to evaluate the vocal part of Greg's speech,
talking about. And yes, the, I did notice though that you could have used the button pauses. That's about the only thing that I noted here where you know used a little bit, but you could have used more pauses. I like when you I like it when you made him stand up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For an hour, but then uh, it might have been easier if you were if you had made him sit there and then talked about it, yeah, and then made him stand up and say, "Hey, you know, look at the dude, right?" Uh, but other than that, I, I think it was a great speech. I totally enjoyed it. Thanks. You know, the part that I like best about the speech was the book. <laughs> I thought it was really good. If the part, and then you were doing the makeup and stuff, but I think what would have been really cool is if you were actually got up close and started to use the button. <laughs> that would have been good. To evaluate the connectedness of the speech, uh, Tim Fuller. Quality. 